So as you can see, I've put on uh, the ink, I've done the ink drawing. Um, I left gaps here and a few here and I made little dotted lines down here. And, and as I said I would do, I added some darker lines just to sort of bring out the tone a little bit more round here and up here. That's all I'm going to do with with the drawing for now. But once the paint, when, once I put the paint on and it's dried, I might decide to add some more ink. I'm not sure yet, but we'll wait and see. Right. So for this bit, we're going to have a look at mixing colours and trying different colours and, and looking to see how they bleed together. Because if we look at Sunga Park's work we can see that she's used some really interesting colours. She's, you, from looking at those colours there, you might not think that there's much red or yellow, but you can see as it comes out a little bit here. Same with here, you can kind of start to see the colours as the water, it gets more watery, as she's lifted off some colour. So before we get to this stage, before we decide what we're going to, what colour we're going to use on our drawing, we're going to try some colours out because it's no point. There is no point at all just adding colours willy nilly and not knowing how they're going to look together because you might have spent quite a lot of time over that, and suddenly it's like, oh God, why did I do that? But we're not going to get to that point because we're going to test things out before we do that. So I've already written on some colours that I'm going to try out just for just for uh, saving time. Here's my little palette of paints. I don't know why there was one missing there. I don't know what colour it was. <laughs> anyway, so we've got Burnt Sienna. Cerulean blue or intense blue, we've got cadmium yellow. So we've got cerulean, uh, sorry, so we've got burnt sienna here. Now burnt sienna is uh, like a light brown, but it's very red. So that's where the sienna comes in. Anything with the word sienna seems to have quite a reddish tint to it. So we're gonna put, see how red it is. I'm going to put a huge blob of it there, pointing in towards the middle. Wash the brush out. Always use some paper towel to take off the excess uh, water as you go. Cerulean blue, it's uh, a blue that's quite, it's quite greenish actually. And then we're going to add the cadmium yellow. You see, if I was clever, I'd have probably put the cadmium yellow one first because, ah, wrong one, that's lemon yellow. See, I'm, I'm trying to rush because I only have 15 minutes for these, for these video things, otherwise my computer doesn't seem to be happy with me if it's any longer. Right. And then we're going to let them just sort of move into each other a little bit to see what they look like. Move them in. The paint, the wet paint, if we talk about techniques, this technique is called wet in wet because it's wet paint on or in wet paint. If you feel as though you've got too much, like I feel as though I've got a little bit too much here, I'm gonna take some off. Sometimes we get some really nice neutral, neutral browns, neutral greys. That cerulean blue, intense, is, is <laughs> as it says on the tin, it's very intense. 
but it's quite nice. You just just have to remember not to use a huge amount of it. Burnt sienna is quite nice as it comes out. The cerulean blue as it goes into the burnt sienna makes it browner. And I'm not sure at all about the cadmium yellow. But I do quite like the way it changes as it goes, as the other two come in. So we've got we've got an idea about how those colours will mix. Let's have a look at these three colours. I'm going to do three sets of three colours, but of course you might decide to do much more than three just to try things out. I think I need to clean my sap green. Alizarin Crimson, which is it's quite a pinky red actually. And then burnt sienna again. See how this looks. So you want to, you, the technique that we're looking at is wet and wet, but also we're looking to see how those colours bleed into each other, because that is a huge part, part of Sunga Park's work, how colours sort of bleed and blend into each other, and how they look. I think the cream, alizarin crimson looks a bit pinky for what I want to do. But I don't know, so far I quite like the burnt sienna. And I quite like this up green. Okay, go on to the next one. So we've got yellow ochre. Uh, you'll get used to these names, or you should get used to these names, rather than saying yellow or blue, because there's a huge amount of yellows, blues, reds, greens. Yellow oak is quite, uh, not quite as translucent as the other, there's quite a lot of pigment. Let's go for the burnt umber which is this dark brown we haven't used burnt umber yet i thought it'd be quite good to see how the darker colors mix because i'm going to use the intense blue again the other blue that you can see in the palette is ultramarine blue which has a little bit of a tendency towards um, uh, like a red, red spectrum. Slightly warmer, blue. If you heard that rumble, that was a plane going past. I'm not quite used to planes going past at the moment during lockdown. They're very few and far between. Sometimes we get the odd Chinook helicopter, which is always quite exciting. 
What a sad life I lead. Okay, right, so decisions, which should I go for? I quite like, I like the intense blue because I can imagine that there might be some parts of the building that you get that little bit of blue and it could, could sort of pick up on maybe the darker areas, some of that. I think I like the burnt umber. I think I like these three. So I'm gonna I'm going to have a go with these three on my painting using the dark colours first. Or do I? Oh okay, let's think about this. Maybe if I use okay, maybe if I use a wash of the yellow ochre first and then the darker colours can be pulled down into the washier areas. I'm going to go with that colour scheme and I'll be back in a bit. <laughs> 